Hi guys, my name's Dalton, and this is my wife, Hillary, and this little girl behind the bottle, her name is Letty. And um, we're, <laughs> what's up girl? We are from Cottonwood, Texas, Scurry, Texas. Um, we live on a, I guess you'd call it a little farm, a uh, little ranch. And we live out here, we've been married, uh, been married for a long time now, not really, almost eight years. And, uh, but this is our story of adoption. And uh, I pray that it blesses you and I, pl I pray that God is glorified through it. And we're gonna, I'm sure we're gonna have some um, bloopers in this video, but uh, we're gonna try to get through it with without too many and without too many tears, all right? Okay. Are you good, lady? I can't get over the <laughs> Are you ready? Let's go. <laughs> all right, so this is our story about adoption, but I gotta, I gotta start you out before that um, so you can get the, the big picture of everything that God's done here. Um, Hillary and I, we got married on the 12th of December in 2015. We'd met through ministry and friends earlier on that year, dated for a few months, were engaged for three months, didn't see a point. I knew I wanted to marry her. <laughs> she, she wanted to marry me um, and the Lord said, do it. So I said, why well, wait? So we got, so we got married. <laughs> and um, so our other daughter is not here right now. When I married Hillary, I got the blessing of a not the cutest nine-year-old little girl ever. Her name is Lily. She's not here right now. She is actually a college girl now. Um, so she's not with us. We only got a little lady here pulling on my beard. But it's the four of us. When we got married, it was the three of us, really. And before we started dating, before we got married, Hillary told me that she might not be able to get pregnant ever again. Um, there was some ovarian cysts that she had, some um, she had one tube that wasn't quite sure if it was really working or not. And um, so she said, you know what? I don't know if we can get pregnant or not. I said, well, the Lord knows. If the Lord wants to give us a baby, he'll give us a baby. And if not, then amen. <laughs> the, Lord's, the Lord's got it under control. But through, uh, through seeing my sister have babies and working with the kids and the youth at church, I just, I had the desire to, to father my own child. And that desire just, it grew and grew and grew. Hillary at this point was kind of over the thought of having any more kids. Lily was 10, 11 years old already. And uh, she's like, huh? I don't want to restart. Got a 10, 11 year old, I don't want to restart. And she's planning on, uh, what were you planning on doing? Traveling the world. Traveling the world. Um, and I know y'all don't know us, maybe you do, but uh, we don't come from money. Uh, so she wanted to travel the world. I don't know where she was gonna get the, the money to do it, but that was her, that was her plan. But in 2017, Hillary became pregnant. Uh, first time she became pregnant since we've been married and she found out early on in the pregnancy that she was, and she just had this gut feeling that it was gonna be a girl. So we, we said we were gonna name her Ryan, and that's my middle name. Um, Ryan with two in, so it wasn't like the guy Ryan. But uh, 
Hillary started spotting one night, wasn't feeling good, said, let's go to the hospital. So we went to the hospital and um, sure enough, she was having a miscarriage. And being, being Lil's stepdad, being an uncle to my, to my nephews, my nephew at the time, um, and just working with kids, you know, my desire to be a dad was just, oh, it was cut right there. I was heartbroken. Hillary was, Hillary was fine health-wise. The, the baby passed through naturally. And uh, so health-wise, Hillary was good. Emotionally, she was a wreck as well. But um, we'd only known about this baby a few weeks. We'd only known her a few weeks in the womb, but we already loved her. And, um, you know, God says that before we were ever formed in the womb that he knew us. Um, so yeah, it was a, it was a baby. That was our little baby girl that we never got to meet, but she got to, she got to grow up in heaven, is growing up in heaven. But for us, no child on earth, um, together. together. We got Lily. I'm blessed to be a stepdad. I love being a stepdad. Um, you know, people say that people say that coming in when they're nine years old, uh, that can be a little late in their life. You can be past the bonding stage. That's far from far from reality, at least in our story. Um, but God had a lot to do with it. Jesus had a lot to do with it, and He just, you know. Hillary's not the one to go fishing and hunting with me and feed cows, but Lily, Lily will be the first one to hop in the truck when I say, let's go. All right, so after, after we grieved a while, it took me a while um, to get over that miscarriage. Um, but after a while, things went back to normal, as normal as they could, and we were just going on with life. Nothing ever happened, no more pregnancies, but God still gave me the desire. He never took that away from me. And over time, Hillary seeing my desire, it became hers. Um, so my sister had three babies. Hillary seeing that, getting the love on them. Hillary's got a niece that had a baby, had a baby boy getting the love on him, Hillary starts getting the itch again too. So Hillary's got the desire, I got the desire. But it'd been six years since uh, since that miscarriage. In January of 2023, Hillary had some more complications. Uh, been a couple weeks, some things been going on that just weren't right. And in our family, we don't go to the hospital unless your arm's falling off. But it'd been, it'd been more than a week, right? Three weeks. Three, three weeks. Um, so we let it go three weeks. It didn't get better. We figured, hey, something's wrong. Um, so we were at your mom's. Mm -hmm. We were at her mom's in Kaufman one night, eating dinner. And when we left there, we just said, hey, let's go to the urgent care. said, hey, let's go to the urgent care. So we did that and uh, went to the urgent care. They did some tests on her, came back and said, uh, you're pregnant. No, they asked, have you taken a pregnancy test? And I said, no, there's no way. <clears throat> and then they came back and said, you're pregnant. What were your thoughts? Not good. <laughs> they were not good. <laughs> So from the urgent care, they sent us to Kaufman ER and Kaufman ER did some, did some scans. Don't forget I had to stop and get a blizzard on the way over. Oh yeah, we need to. So Hillary found out that her test said she was pregnant um, and needed to go to the ER right away. So I was driving from the urgent care to the ER and Hillary had to stop at Dairy Queen to get a blizzard. 
This was top priority, lady. Dairy Queen Blizzard, top priority. I just got some devastating news. <laughs> so, got her Blizzard, went to Kaufman, did test. Kaufman said, oh man, we're not, uh, we're not equipped for this. Uh, equipped for this? What do you, what do you mean? Um, they were very serious too when they came in the room. Yeah. So, they didn't really give us much information. They just said, hey, you gotta go to Dallas. So Hillary, um, they called an ambulance. They get the ambulance there, and um, we ride. We ride to Dallas. I rode in the. Did I ride that time? In yes, the ambulance. That was the time you had to get medicine because <laughs> you threw up. So I had to get medicine in the ambulance that time because I threw up in a barf bag. I don't do good with riding in the back of cars or not driving. Um, so it was a little much for me. But we made it there in one piece, and um, may I mind you, I was the one in pain, and he threw it. Yeah, <laughs> you ain't gotta tell him everything. <laughs> um, so we knew from the moment that <laughs> they told us at that urgent care that Hillary was pregnant. We knew from that moment that something wasn't right. We'd been through this before, and if the test showing pregnant, she's having these complications, something's not right. Her body's rejecting the pregnancy. Um, so there was no, there was no joy. There was no. They told us at Kaufman I was having an ectopic pregnancy, and they actually said it was bilateral. Um, so that's why they came in very serious because. My body could have went into sepsis and I would have not made it. Yeah. If you know anything about ectopic pregnancies, they could be very dangerous. And um, I've talked to a few people from our town that have had them uh, and knocked them down, almost, almost really hurt them. And um, so there was no, was no happiness, was no joy, was no jumping around. Um, this time the doctor said she's pregnant but uh, we knew it wasn't good we get to dallas and they're they're hee-hawing about it takes them it takes them a while to do anything but uh i wouldn't know because they had me on um, heavy drugs <laughs> yeah yeah but uh, they finally take hillary back to surgery and um, they said you got one ectopic pregnancy Dallas says this. So they go in to remove my tube, my left tube. To remove her, her left tube had the pregnancy stuck on the outside. Stuck mm -hmm. on the outside of the tube. It didn't didn't go to where it needed to go, so it was just stuck there. It was bleeding. And um, excuse me. Uh, so they took that out, they closed her up. No blood transfusion that time, right? But they closed her up. We left the next day. Mm -hmm. Couple yeah, days. Couple days after, after couple days after the surgery, we left. She was she was starting to do starting to do better. They said her her um, January twenty fourth when we went in to surgery. So when we left, probably January 26 or something. Well, when we got home, she never got any better. Uh, she felt a little better the first day, but then still having the same complications, never getting her energy back, never feeling good. Hillary's normally a, a go-getter, jump around, let's do whatever. That wasn't that wasn't her. She was trying to. Um, she was trying to so much that it had been it we had been home almost a week or at least a week. And Hillary said, Hey, we've been doing all this stuff. Uh, let's just let's just uh go to the movies. Let's have us a date night. I said, Are you are you sure you're you're not feeling good? This is Valentine's weekend. Valentine's weekend. 
not feeling good, Hillary. We don't have to. We don't have to go do anything. We can have Valentine's at home." And uh, she said, "No, I wanna. I wanna go out. I wanna go on a date." I said, "All right. Well, I'll see you when I get off work." So we, I go ahead and I buy the tickets on my phone. And uh, we go to Rockwall. So we go to the movie. We start watching the movie. We're about 30 minutes in. And I had been in pain all day, but I was determined to go on a date with my husband because of the past few weeks that we had had. And, um, you know, we even had to stop at the Walmart and Terrell parking lot to let me throw up because I was in so much pain. He didn't understand what was going on with me because it's not my normal. Um, not it's not how I am. I just usually am just pretty happy-go-lucky and just go along with everything, even if I am in just a little bit of pain. Um, so he was like, "Are you sure you want to go?" I said, "Yes, I do. I want to go." So we go, and um, actually on the way there, I was like, "Hey, look, there's a hospital like three minutes down from the road. So if we need to go, then we'll be close by." But um, we ended up going to the movies, and in the middle of the movie, I just couldn't handle it anymore. I um, had tried everything, and I couldn't even walk. I had to like inch, like almost like I was a brand new baby, walking step by step to the bathroom, throwing up. Um, he had to drive my car around, and it was just, it was a lot. So we get to the hospital and they make us wait. And of course, Dalton does not do very good with I don't wait. I don't wait well. Especially um, when seeing she's hurting. how much pain I was in. And like I just had tears rolling down my face, but I was smiling and laughing at the same time. And he was like, get her into her room. And I was like, okay, it's, it's fine. You know, they'll get to us as soon as they can. And um, that's when they took us in. And at, by the time that we actually had got to see a nurse, I was in so much pain that um, not even, what was it that they gave me? Um, it wasn't morphine, it was something else. It was a strong, it was a strong drug. Strong drug. They fentanyl. gave her what? Fentanyl. It was a fentanyl. fentanyl. That wasn't even working. Wasn't even touching the pain. So then they decide to run a few procedures and from there we find out that I was bleeding internally and um, we were really shocked because they found also that I was pregnant. So Kaufman originally had told us that we had a bilateral ectopic pregnancy when we went to Dallas. Dallas said they did not see bilateral. It's very uncommon. In fact, uh, I'm not going to jump ahead, but statistically, it's like one in 200,000 people that it happens to. And so um, we were shocked. And then they tell me, we've got to get you to Dallas immediately. So I'm in shock again, and I'm upset because I have to ride in the ambulance. Bless you. I have to ride in the ambulance by myself, and I'm in a bunch of pain. And Dalton's following me, you know, behind, but I can see the car through the ambulance. And of course, the guy is talking to me, just doing his job, asking me, "Are you okay? Is everything good?" And I was like, "I really don't want to talk right now." <laughs> um, and then we get to Dallas, they did get me back pretty quick, but they still took their time. Yeah. Um, and again, that did not go well with Dalton. No. <laughs> so we get, to, we get to the ER the second time, they get us back as Hillary was saying. Um, and we go back for what would be surgery number two. They had to drain out like a half liter of blood that had got in her abdomen and they said there's somehow they missed it but they said there's another ectopic pregnancy in there so what so what Kaufman was saying they got it right it was a bilateral ectopic pregnancy um, Hillary said it it's a one in 200,000 
case. So they go in there, they're, they're planning on taking, draining that blood out. They're planning on either trying to take the, the pregnancy out or they're gonna have to take out her other two, her only remaining two. So that's the plan. And I prayed as we were going to the hospital the second time. She growled at me. Um, Hillary was in an ambulance and I was following behind and I was I was praying and I was just telling God, hey, I I don't care if I'm able to father a child of my own as as long as Lily gets to keep her mom and Hillary doesn't have to go through the pain or um, die. I said, I'd be happy with it. I didn't care. And I had complete peace with that prayer. I had complete peace knowing that if I spent the rest of my years on earth here and never got to father a child of our own, I would be happy with it and God would see us through because I just didn't want her hurting anymore. So they're going back into surgery, plans to take out her only remaining two and um, the surgeon scrubs out during surgery and comes out to the waiting room where me and my mom and Lily, my sister, we're, we're all out there. The surgeon comes out, grabs me, asks me. She says that she could see what she thinks is the pregnancy that's on the tube that's uh, bleeding. Says she can probably, probably take that and leave the tube and everything be okay but there's a chance that it might not be okay. It's just, I don't know, I, I told the doctor, I said, well, I prayed about this before we came up here. I got complete peace if you have to, whatever you have to do. Uh, I said, you're the, you're the professional here, I'm no surgeon. You don't want me to be a surgeon. Um, I said, do what, is, do what is best in your professional opinion. She said, all right, she got back in there she, she, they just took the blood out. They, they took the, the pregnancy out of there and they were able to leave her, leave her tube intact. And when she, when Hillary woke up, me and Lily were waiting in the waiting room. And uh, the surgeon actually came to you and told you that she's been in the field for a long time. And she said, in her right mind, like with what she saw, she could not take out what looked like a normal working tube. And she asked Dalton, do you want me to take it or do you want me to leave it? And Dalton chose to leave it. And well, I, I knew that would make, that would make Hillary still feel like a woman. Uh, so I woke up from surgery and Dalton and Lily came in and they were talking to me and he told me that what had happened with the doctor and he decided to keep my tube and Lily being as caring as she always is asked me like how do you feel are you okay with that and my response was I know Dalton wants a child and uh, I don't really remember much after that <laughs> But I didn't, I didn't tell the surgeon to leave the tube in there because I wanted to have a child. I just wanted her to feel like a woman um, as much as as much as she could. I know if they took both of them, it's just it's gonna make you feel different, at least at least mentally and emotionally. Um, but. I didn't leave it in there to, to have any more kids. I had complete peace um, with Hillary not, us not having a child because I did not want to see her go through that pain or, or have a chance of losing her. But because I did leave it in there, Hillary's like, okay, well, we can still, we can still keep trying. Let me just heal up from surgery and we'll see what the next steps are. And I was, no, we are not doing that. Um, so it took, what, six weeks for you to heal up that second surgery? 
Uh, yes. Yeah. Six weeks healing time from that second surgery. And she's she's healing up, she's feeling better. So she, sch she schedules a follow-up appointment with a fertility doctor. After she does her six weeks, she sets this appointment to see a fertility doctor to see what our next steps could be at having a baby because as you know, the wife always gets her way. I'm over here saying, no, we're not having kids. I'm not putting you through that. Your body's been rejecting it. It's not supposed to happen. Hillary says, we're, we're just gonna go see this fertility doctor and see what they have to say. <laughs> but this is where, this is where it gets even more interesting. So the day before Hillary's fertility appointment, I'm at work, it's Monday, right? So I get the text message from my mom to me and Hillary, hey, there's this family at the church with a baby. It needs to be adopted. Do y'all want her? And I write back and say, Mom, I can't really answer that in a text message. Call Hillary. Um, some other things go back and forth. My mom, my mom calls Hillary. They talk. Hillary calls me when I'm on break We're talking about this baby. And mind you, we've never never really sat and thought about adoption before. Um, we've known people that done it. We have good friends that have done it, but you know, I was always, I was always saying, you know, if God wants to give us a baby, he'll, he'll do it naturally. Um, never thought about, never thought about adoption, but now it's, it's in our faces. Um, we have to think about it. And we only have a short time to think about it. So we pray about it. We think about it that day, that Monday. We go to we go to the gym. Hillary meets me at the gym when we get off work. And we're working out. We start to head to the house. My mom asks, you know, if we want to go meet the baby. And Hillary's like, uh, I got family in town. Can we do it tomorrow? And I was about to, I was about to write my mom back, but I was like, you know, I, I really want to go do it tonight. So I wrote my mom, can we, can we go tonight? And my mom writes back, that's what I was just about to ask you. So out of the millions of people that we have in Texas, the family with this, the family with this baby is literally five minutes down the road from my house. Tell me that ain't God. And um, literally five minutes down the road. So we go, we meet this baby that evening. We spend about two, two hours over there just sitting on the couch, loving on her. And at one point I looked at Hillary and Hillary looked at me and she was like, this is our, this is our baby. And I was like, yeah, sure is. And when we left that night. Um, I said, what do I do about my doctor's appointment tomorrow? Yeah, so fertility appointments tomorrow. I said, well, you don't need that no more. Uh, my mom said, yeah, you don't need that no more. So uh, when we leave, she says, come back, get your kid in the morning. I mean, of course, there's there's a lot of legal things that we got to go through, and uh, we did we did everything, but um, you know, Letty has been in our lives since she was three days old, um, so we're we're all she knows as mom and dad. She was born with she was born with drugs in her system. Um, and God knew what we'd been through. We were trying our best to follow Jesus. We weren't perfect at it, of course, but we were trying our best to follow Jesus and just live a life that glorified him, whether he gave us kids, whether he didn't. 
Um, I was just gonna love on my nieces and nephews if, if that was the case. Um, but then God placed God placed Letty in our lives that, that day. So we've had her since she was four days old. She's five months yesterday, mm -hmm. five months yesterday. And our adoption was legalized. She got our, she got our last name. She got our social security, well, not our social security. Um, she will have your last name she, her social security. Yeah, she will have my last name. Um, so one week we're thinking there's no way for us to have any more kids, have any kids. And the next day, God's like, here you go. Here's a baby. Do y'all want it? Um, of course, God. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, and, well, and after we got her, a bunch of things started to unfold. Um, so one of my mother-in-law's friends I wouldn't like she's just a, not a close friend but acquaintance they talk pretty often when they go through um, Chatfield and she had a dream and she told my mother-in-law that uh, Dalton and Hillary were gonna have a baby and she didn't know how and of course my mother-in-law is like how do you tell that to someone who desires a child so strongly so we didn't find that out actually until the day we brought her home. And then also uh, a good friend of mine had been praying about a baby for like three weeks and it was just a strong feeling. And she was like, I just knew the moment that I met her that I had been praying for her. And I was like, wow, it is really overwhelming. And then um, my friend, that had in 2017 she had given me a blanket um, and told me that God told her I was gonna have a little girl and I was like okay you know the time had passed years had gone by and I had just given it to my sister-in-law because she has a little girl and I was like I don't think I'm gonna need this anymore um, and she gave it back <laughs> because you know, God's got a little sense of humor sometimes. And then also, um, I had friends who had adopted a child. Um, actually, they have adopted a couple of children. And when I told her about Letty, they had told me that her mom had asked if they had ever talked to me about Adoption if I had ever considered that and she said I just don't think it's the right time right now and Her mother said fine. I'm just gonna pray for her to adopt a baby Well, she had been praying for us to adopt a baby My sister had been praying for us to adopt a baby My pastor's mother had been praying for us to adopt a baby and then all of us uh, I mean out of all of that Dalton and I did not know that these prayers were going up we just knew that when we met her that she was ours and so we found all of those things out the day that we picked her up and then on top of that i'm praying and i'm praying and i'm praying and i'm asking god like please give me a sign like i just need to know that what we're doing is of your will and um as we go there's this sign and it says providence park and I was like, Providence, you know, it, it, in my mind, I was like, okay, that means something biblically. I just didn't know exactly what it meant. So I, what do you do? You Google it. You <laughs> Google it. And I found out that Providence means the protective care of God. And so then, of course, you know, I'm weeping, I'm crying. I'm just like, thank you, God, for all of these things. Um, and, you know, and for friends who pray without you even knowing that they're praying for you. So, Letty's five months, like I said, born with drugs in her system, never any side effects, never any withdrawals, just God's hand on her from the very beginning um, she's a little chunk of monk, just eats everything, growing, growing, growing. 
Um, she's been a testimony of God's love ever since she was born. Uh, nurses, people we come across, our church family, um, people that I work with in the drug and alcohol rehab. I mean, her story just resonates with so many people um, and it gives hope and it gives light to others. And, you know, as, as I was thinking last week, telling Hillary, hey, get your thoughts together. We need to do a video. This scripture came to my mind. It's James 117. This says, all good things come from God and every perfect gift is from him. And I knew that this is a perfect gift from God. Letty is our perfect little gift from God. Um, picked out just for us. God said, hey, y'all are going to raise this baby. This is y'all's. Um, well, really, it's our, our and the community and the church because... <laughs> and it's God's. And God's. It's God's first and foremost. It God's is. child. It is. Um, but we wouldn't... I don't feel like we would be in this situation if we weren't following God ourselves. God loves everybody. God gives favor to those who serve him, to those who love him. And me and Hillary, we do, we do our best to follow God. Uh, and when you, when you put your faith in Jesus, when you believe that he died for your sins, when you believe that he's the only way to restore that relationship between you and God and for you to even have a chance to see heaven. Um, the Bible says that once you believe and confess that, you're saved. And once you're saved and you start living for God, God looks down on us. And, and God's just like, he's just like a parent to us as we're a parent to Letty. He, we want her safe. We want her loved. We want her cherished. That's what God wants for all his children. He wants to give us good things. He wants to give us good gifts. And uh, I know that's why God gave us this baby. So it's true in our lives and it can be true in yours. You just have to believe in him and follow his word. Um, this adoption is one of the best things that has happened in my life, Hillary would probably say the same, uh, but it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't have happened if we weren't following God. So honor God with your life and don't think, don't think weird about adoption. I, I couldn't love this baby any more or any less had it come from me and Hillary naturally had a stork, dropped it off. I mean, I love this baby. Um, she is my, she is my daughter. She is my youngest daughter. Um, she was picked out and given to us by the Lord. So adoption has been a great thing. Um, you know, we didn't have to deal with CPS or none of that stuff. So we, we really had it easy. Um, but that's because the Lord's hand was through it all. So follow the Lord. If you're if you if you want a baby, if you if you want a child and you think it's God's will um, for you to have one, pray about it. And pray about adoption because it's the it's why we got little Letty here. And uh Letty is, Letty is a gift to us, to our church, to our families, and she's going to be a gift to this world. God's going to use her in a mighty way. Uh, so that's our story. I hope it helps. I pray that, I pray that you're blessed through this, and I uh, pray you get out there and give God the glory. Yeah.